Good morning, Facebook family and friends. Yes, this is still the day that the Lord has made, and we are yet rejoicing and being glad in it because we know that our God is in control of everything. Everything is right on schedule and happening the way God said it would happen. So I bless you today. I thank God for you that are with me today. I know this word is going to bless you. It bless my soul. And you know, I'm always excited about the word of God. Sometimes a little more, but you know, today I'm very excited about this word. It is a beautiful lesson and I want to get right into it because I want to complete it. Uh, we're going to be coming out of Mark, the 12th chapter. And we're going to read verses 28 through 31 and very familiar for so many of you, but please write these scriptures down and go back and read this story, meditate on it. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Let's read Mark, <clears throat> the 12th chapter, verse 28 through 31. And one of the scribes came and having heard them reasoning together and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. Father, your word is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our pathway. The entrance of your holy word, it gives us light. It gives understanding to our simple souls. Father, we ask you to speak to us today by your precious Holy Spirit. Give us understanding in your word that we might live and teach others how to live. Let your word fall on good ground for your glory and bring forth fruit that remains in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. Verse 28. So let me give you a little bit of background here. So Jesus was talking to the religious leaders, uh, the scribes, the Pharisees, the lawyers, the priests, the elders. Uh, these people were talking to Jesus. And if you go back, uh, all the way back to chapter 11, you'll see where they were trying to trick him, trying to catch him up in his words that he might say something wrong because these were the people who knew the scriptures. They knew the word. And so they wanted to see, you know, just what did Jesus know? And so they had already put their lawyers on him. They had already put the chief priests, the scribes, and the Pharisees. And so now they put a scribe on him. And so one of the scribes, look what it says. Having heard them reasoning together and perceiving that he, Jesus, answered them well. Then you now he answered the question. Now the scribes, they studied the word of God. In fact, they were the ones who told the king what was written, what the word said. The scribes got, got to the point where they were so well versed in the word and the scriptures that people weren't going to the priests, they were going to the scribes. Uh, and the scribes would tell them what was in the word. You see, Nehemiah was a scribe, he was a good one though. And so the scribes, they knew the word. And so this one, he heard that Jesus talking to the elders and these other folks, and he heard that Jesus answered them correctly. And he said, okay, now let me ask him this. And so then he asked him, what is the, which is the first commandment of all? And then Jesus tell him, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And secondly, love your neighbor as yourself. Look what Jesus says. There is none other commandment greater than than these. Now for me, if Jesus says there's no other commandment greater than these two commandments, it would seem to me 
that you would want to know what this is and that you would want to make sure you did what this scripture says. And what does it say? I want to deal with the second one, and that is to love your neighbor as yourself. So look what he says. The second one is so important to God, he puts his second to us loving him. Now, most of us, we have no problem loving God. It's easy for us to love God because God is good and we all love God. And people of every religion love God. Everybody loves God, you see. And so it's easy to love God, but loving your neighbor noun as yourself, that becomes a little tricky for us because who is my neighbor? And sometimes uh, our neighbors are not very likable. And so it, it could get a little harder to like them or to love them. But let's find out who our neighbors are and, and how we love our neighbors. So he says, love your neighbor as yourself. Well, let's see. He's talking about love, agapeo, love, that kind of love, the kind of love that does good, not the phileo love, the warmth of a kiss or embrace. No, no, not that kind of love, but the kind of love that's in 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter in the fourth verse that says, love is kind. And we did talk about that word kind before, that kind is a, it demonstrates as, how do you know someone is kind? Because you see their kindness in action in the form of help. Kindness helps, it makes you help. Kindness is a willingness to help. And kind is assistance. When you are kind to someone, how do we know you are kind? Because you assist them, you assist them with whatever the need is. So he says, assist your neighbor. How do I love my neighbor? I'm not gonna go run over, oh, kissy. No, that, not that. He says, assist your neighbor if your neighbor needs help. That's how you show kindness, loving kindness. That kind of love is what he's talking about. And so then the question becomes, who is my neighbor? Who is my neighbor? Oh, I love this. You're going to love it too. Look at this. So the word neighbor, it means fellow man. Now it also, interestingly enough, means fellow creature, which is animals. We are not to be cruel to animals, folks. The Bible tells us that don't be cruel to animals. I want to read this out of this book the definition of what a neighbor is because it is wonderful. I should have put a marker there, but okay. So I want to say, I'm coming from this book, which is also Bible, see King James right there. This book is an amazing, can you see it? Amazing study book and it's a Bible. It is amazing and I love it guys. This is like second to my Bible. I have this one and another one, and they are amazing if you want to get it, if you want to study the Word of God. So in here, the word neighbor, listen to this. It says, fellow man or fellow creature, don't be cruel to animals, folks. It says, indicating primarily an outward nearness or proximity. That's someone in your immediate vicinity is your neighbor occurs in Luke 10, 29, the parable of the Good Samaritan, which teaches that he who is outwardly near us should be the object of our concern in spite of the fact that there are no ties of kindred or nation between us. In other words, the people who are in your immediate vicinity, that is your neighbor. Let me break it down some more for you. When you go to the supermarket, those people who are right there in your immediate vicinity, they are your neighbor. It's not talking about the pe person who lives next door to you. It's talking about the person when you go to the gas station, people around you, those folks are your neighbors. It's talking about when you go to the car wash, those folks sitting around there waiting on their cars, that's your neighbor, folks. 
Go to the laundromat. Those folks sitting up in the laundromat, that's your neighbor. Look what it says. It says, in spite of the fact that there are no ties of kindred, you don't have to be, it's not talking about blood relations. It's not talking about we're all black or we're all white or we're all Latino or we're all Indian. No, no, no relation. It says, in spite of the fact that there are no ties of kindred or nation between us. What ties us as neighbors? Listen to this. God is going to hold us responsible for this because he's telling us your neighbor are the people most nearest you at your uh, present time. Wherever you are outside of your house, those folks are your neighbors. Now let's look at the story of the Good Samaritan. Luke 10, 39. Uh, what, 29. Luke 10, 29, yeah. Let's look at that story. And I'm gonna try to read through it really quickly. I know, I know most of us know these stories, but I'm gonna jump around in here. So the Good Samaritan, here's the story. Verse 25, and behold a certain, no, I'm sorry, guys. Verse, do, 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 where I wanna start. Him just by himself. Where am I in the right chapter here? I am? Okay, let's go over here. Yes, 29, because that's where the lawyer asked the question. But he, and this is the lawyer who thought he could trip Jesus up, but he willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, who is my neighbor? Because you see, Jesus was telling him, love your neighbor as yourself. That's the great commandment. So now he thinks he can trick Jesus. Well, who is my neighbor? Okay, and so Jesus tells the story of the Good Samaritan. Jesus answering him, a certain man went down from Jerusalem. Now, let me tell you, this certain man, he's the one who fell amongst thieves, and they beat him up and left him for dead. Now, this word certain, notice that. It says a certain man. That word certain means average Joe, nobody special. See, he was just a man uh, who had a problem. His problem was they beat him up and left him for dead. And then here come the priest. Look what the priest did. He looked at him, passed by the other side. The priest was the one, folks, who went into the presence of God for the people. He looked at the man, kept on going the other way. Then we got the Levite. The Levite was like the assistant pastor. He looks at him. He goes the other way. Now we got the Samaritan who is a mixed breed of Jew. He was Jew and pagan when they went into exile. The Samaritans were born of Jew and pagan, okay? And so the Jews did not like the Samaritans because they considered them a lower class of people. They were nobody special. They felt like they were more important to God than the Samaritans. And so the Levite would have been a Jew, full Jew, and the priest would have been a Jew, full Jew, going into the presence of God for the people. The Levite assisting with the cares and or uh, of the church these people who knew god okay this samaritan didn't claim to know god he was just a certain samaritan in other words he was nobody special just an average joe and josephine like you and i this samaritan he saw this man and look what he did in verse 33 but when the samaritan saw him he had compassion on him see again remember what that scripture said no kindred we don't have no ties he had no ties to this man he didn't know this man but this man was in his immediate vicinity at the time he was going that way he crossed this man's path saw him there here is my neighbor that was his neighbor now look what the scripture says, and we are to love our neighbor as ourselves. And so this man, this Samaritan, uh, who was nobody special, he stops. He has compassion on this man, watch this, as himself, as if himself was laying there wounded. And he took care of this man, poured oil 
and wine into his wounds, bandaged him up as best he could, put him up on his horse, took him to the inn, said, take care of him. And if you spend any more than what I gave you, when I come back, I'll give you that too. This was his neighbor. He was loving his neighbor as himself. How do we know he loved that man as himself? He didn't kiss him. He wasn't giving him embraces. Not that kind of love. The kind of love that is kind. The kind of love that helps. The kind of love that gives a person what they need to fare well. He was loving his neighbor as himself. He had compassion on the man. Let's look at compassion. Compassion, oh, I want to see. This is the uh, definition of compassion from this book. It means to feel deeply. He was feeling deeply for this man. He looked at him and he, he, him, he was hurting for this man to see him wounded like this and left for dead like he had no value. Look, he felt as if th this word compassion, it means to feel as if in the internal organs of the body, really deep, viscerally, like the deepest where you can feel. It's the feeling that Jesus had when the people were crying over Lazarus, when Jesus groaned within himself and Jesus wept because he had compassion on the people. He was feeling their pain deeply and this man had compassion. And watch this, compassion makes you do something. Compassion is not, well, let me read Webster's definition of compassion to you. Compassion, Webster says, is a deep, sympathetic consciousness of others' distress. Look at this. Together with a desire to alleviate it. See, the Levite looked on the man and said, oh, boy, they sure beat him up. The priest looked on the man and said, my, I wonder if he's dead, and kept on going. There was no compassion. There was no loving. These people knew the word. They knew the scriptures to love thy neighbor as thyself, but they did not. They had no compassion, no care, no concern. This man was beneath them. They didn't want to get their hands dirty. And so they just looked at him. Oh, not my concern. Kept right on walking. But the compassion, it makes you want to alleviate the distress of your neighbor. Now, in a supermarket, that somebody got a broken arm. They're trying to carry their bags with the other arm, push their cart. You know how you uh, love that neighbor? Show kindness, compassion. You say, hey, can I push your cart to your car for you? That's loving your neighbor. That's being kind. And, I, I, you know, I had a young lady one time at the gas station. Uh, she she was a very nice looking young lady. She didn't look like she was doing drugs or anything. She I was pumping my gas and she got out of her car and she ran over to me and I guess she felt safer with me than some other folks there. She came up to me and she said, ma'am, she says, I've got, I think she said about 50 more miles to get home. She says, and I'm just about out of gas and I don't have enough uh, money to get gas to get home. Can you help me? I said, sure, put gas, filled her tank up and let that young lady go home. You see, that is loving your, she was my neighbor. She was right there in my immediate vicinity. She needed help. I showed her loving kindness. We weren't related. We were not the same race. We weren't related, never saw the girl before and never saw her since then. But she was my neighbor because she was in my immediate vicinity and she needed help. And I helped her. She was my neighbor. That's who your neighbor is. That's what neighboring looked like. And I tell you that strictly for an example. Yes, having compassion makes you want to alleviate 
the distress of another person. Let's, let's look at Jesus. And I'm just going to tell you these scriptures, and I'm not going to read the whole scripture, but I'll tell them to you. You can read them at your leisure. Matthew 20 and 34. Look at this. Jesus had compassion. Okay, he had compassion. Now let's see what he did. And touched their eyes that they might see. See, compassion makes you get involved. The Levites, the priests, they had no compassion. Oh, they knew the scriptures, but they did not know the God they read about. There was no relationship because God will make you have compassion for people. You see, love makes you have compassion. Compassion makes you get involved until that person is doing well. Look at that. Jesus touched their eyes that they might see. Mark 1, Jesus moved with compassion moved with compassion his insides was 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 uh, hurting for these people look at this what did he do he had compassion but he didn't stay in compassion what did he do he put forth his hand and touched him and said i will be thou clean what moved with compassion compassion to the point where I'm going to help you give you what you need Lord if you can make me whole he said I will I want you to be whole I want you to be clean and guess what here here is what you need to be whole not just you know James talks about if someone comes into uh, your area and say hey I'm cold and you tell that person oh go be warm you didn't help them Huh? He said, you got to give them those things that they need. You see, that is what compassion is. Giving a person what they need to fare well in the moment. All righty. And then we know the story of the Good Samaritan. He had compassion. How did he show his compassion? He bound up the man's wounds. He didn't look on him like the Levite and the priest. He stopped. He won, he bound up his wounds. He's bleeding out, he's cut, scraped all up, maybe got rocks in his wounds, he takes them out. What, then what did he do? He poured in the oil and the wine. To, and I'm sure that wine stung a little bit, but to, do, to cause healing for the man. Then what did he do? Put him on his own horse. Some folks, you know, you ain't riding in my car. My car is too nice for you to ride in, and you can't get in my car. Oh, no. But you see, he put him on his own horse, which meant the Samaritan walked while he put this wounded man on his horse so that man could fare well. That man couldn't walk. He, he said they left him for dead. So he was pretty messed up. He put him on his horse. He didn't drag him behind him. He got off his horse and walked and put that man on his horse so he could get him to a place so he could be better. Look at that. And then he brought him to the inn with his own money, gave the innkeeper money, said, hey, take care of him. And if you, if you spend more than what I gave you, when I get back, I'll give you some more. That was his neighbor. He was not related to that man. And he was a nobody. He was a Samaritan. He, they, they didn't have dealings with the Jews. You know the woman at the well told Jesus, you know, the Samaritans have no dealing with the Jews. Jews. Jesus told her, if you knew who was talking to you. That's another story. You see, they didn't have nothing to do with the Samaritans. He was a Samaritan. He didn't claim to know God. He didn't claim to have title. He didn't claim to be anything special, but he had compassion. He had compassion for this man. And let me keep going. Lamentations. I know most of you know this verse. Lamentations 3 and 22. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Why? Because his compassions, they fail not. God has compassion for us. Remember what compassion was? A, a, a deep sympathetic consciousness of others distress with a desire to alleviate it so God looks on us his children 
when we are in distress and he has a deep desire to alleviate that stress. And I need you to know today, if you're having any distresses in your life, I need you to believe and receive the compassion of God that fails not. His compassion, remember because compassion moves you to do something. God will do something with your distress. He will alleviate you of that distress if you receive his compassion. If you tell him, Father, your compassion for me, it fails not. And this thing, whatever it is, this distress in my life, I thank you through Christ that you are alleviating that stress because you mean that much to him. You don't have to deal with your distresses by yourself. Trust the God who loves you. If he tells us to love your neighbor as yourself, care about them, help them when they are in distress, what will God do for us? Folks, his compassion fails not. In other words, he don't ever stop having compassion for us to alleviate whatever the distress is in your life. He will pour in the oil of gladness, huh? He will pour in the wine of anointing in your life because you see, it is not by power nor by might. It, uh, listen, it is by my spirit, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. And he will alleviate those distresses. If you just believe that how much God loves you, Listen, he tells us to love one another. So what is he, what, how does he love us? What are we to him? He says this verse, he says this, this uh, uh, loving your neighbor as yourself. He says it's right up under how you love God. Right up under that. It's, it's a very important to God that we love our neighbors as we love ourselves. See, God is going to hold you and me accountable for how we treat our neighbors. On your job, how you treat your neighbor. How he's going to hold you accountable for it. Do you see this? This is very important to him that we love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Folks, remember uh, when I was a young girl, I used to get sick of hearing Diana Ross sing that song. What the world needs now is love, sweet love, because... Every time you saw her, she was singing that song on something. She's singing it. But I'll tell you, Miss Ross was right. We needed it then, and we need it now. See, if we loved one another like we loved ourselves, the Bible says love works no ill towards its neighbor. See, when you love somebody, you won't hurt them. You won't do them wrong. See? And so I tell you, love, that's why the Bible says that love is the fulfillment of the commandment. You can't call the police and say, I want this person arrested. Why, ma'am, what did they do? They love me. They're kind to me. They're good to me. And they will tell me, ma'am, there's no law against kindness. There's no law against love. Do you know that? There is no law against love. You can't get arrested for being kind. Love is the fulfillment of the law, if we would just love one another. So let's go back to uh, Luke 10, and we're going to look at verses 36 and 37. Now this is Jesus talking to this uh, lawyer who thinks he's going to catch Jesus up in his word and uh, understanding of the scripture. Jesus said, which of these three, now who are the three? The priests? The Levite and the Samaritan. That's the three he's talking about. So Jesus said, which of these three thinkest thou, or do you think, was neighbor unto him that fell amongst thieves? So Jesus asked, asked the lawyer that question. Or was it a Pharisee? He says, which one do you think was this man's neighbor? The, the priest who went into the presence of God for the people who knew the word of God? The Levite who was an assistant to the priests and all the work of the temple 
him who wore the priestly garments, who knew how to say all the right things? Do you think, was he that man's neighbor? He looked at him and he passed on the other side. He went around him, didn't want to get too close to him. The priest, the priest, he passed on the other side too. Or who do you think of the three? The Samaritan who stopped and helped this man. Jesus said, which of the three do you think was this man's neighbor? None of them were family members to this man. None of them knew this man. None of them had any kind of ties to this man. But you would think that the priest of the Lord, the Levite priest of the Lord, would have stopped and helped this man, but they did not. You see, Jesus talks about the priests who feed themselves, but do not feed his sheep, do not take care of his sheep who are wounded. He's going to deal with them. You see? So he asked that question. And then th verse 37, here's the man's answer. He said, and he said, he that showed mercy on him, that, that was the man's answer. The one that showed mercy on him. So I ask you, who is your neighbor? Huh? Who are you neighbor to? The person that you show mercy to. That is your neighbor, huh? That that's the one. Who showed mercy to you? Who did you show mercy to? God says anybody in your immediate vicinity at the time is your neighbor and he is going to hold you responsible for how you treat your neighbor. Oh, I can't help them because they're not my color. I can't help them because they're not my gender. I can't help them because they're not as educated as I am. I can't help them because they're not as smart. They're not as pretty as I am. No, no, no. God said the people who are in your immediate vicinity at the time, irregardless of what and who they are, that person is your neighbor. And if they need assistance and you do not help them, God is going to hold you responsible for that. Because he says there's no other commandment greater than these two to love God and to love your neighbor the way you love yourself. If you don't want it done to you, you should not be doing it to other people, huh? Love them as you love yourself. Maybe for some of you, you don't love yourself. So you don't know how to treat other people. You need to ask God to help you love yourself. That's a whole nother issue and message. But Jesus, the man said to Jesus, the one who had mercy on him. Listen to what Jesus says, folks. Then said Jesus unto him, listen, go and do thou likewise. God wants you to go. You've heard this message. He wants you to go and do like the good Samaritan. See, that doesn't mean you got to go walk in the street looking for people who need help. No, God will put you in scenarios where he means for you to help someone. You don't have to go walking down the street and all of these folks on every half a block asking for money. That is not what he's talking about. He's talking about a, a person whose car broke down and, and it's just them by themselves and they need to just push their car off to the side of the road to get out of traffic. If you can help them, that's your neighbor. They're in your immediate vicinity. Help them push that car. That's what he's talking about. He wants us to love one another. And I know this world, we don't love one another. This world is a mean, cruel, wicked place. But what does that have to do with you and I? Because we are in this world, but not of this world. And just because this world is wicked does not mean God is not going to hold us responsible for obeying his word. He said right here, you go and do the same thing. And so I say to you today, you go and do the same thing. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Amen. Praise God. I'm done. I pray this message has blessed you. It certainly blessed me, you know, to see how 
God is concerned about how we treat one another and how we take care of one another. Don't look down on anybody. Nobody's better than anybody. We have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. You see, God is not concerned with your title. Oh, my. I tell you, uh, my daughter and I went to this service a little while back, and a man came in. He had on more chains than Mr. T. He had his entourage around him, and nobody could get close to him. And uh, she said, Mom, what is that? I said, I don't know what that is. But he was apostle somebody. But you couldn't get close to him because his protectors around him wouldn't let you get close to him. But we can get close to Jesus. Jesus wants us to come unto him. He says, come unto me, all ye who labor and who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. See, that's that compassion. I will give you rest. You need rest unto your souls. Jesus is the rest giver. See? People got a lot of stuff, but they don't have a lot of peace. They don't have a lot of joy on the inside. See, joy and peace is not contingent on what you possess. Love, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost is the kingdom of God. Do you have love, joy, and peace on the inside? Are you all about me, 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 me? You don't care about nobody else? See, that, that, mm -mm. That gets boring. And I tell you, people like that, they don't have no peace on the inside. They don't have no love. When we love one another, it pleases God. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, he wants to be. He wants to be your personal Lord and Savior. He wants you to know him, and he wants to know you. He wants your name to be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Listen, folks, we just had a young lady, 20 years old, went to the hospital, was having headaches. They sent her home, said nothing's wrong. About a week later, she was dead. Tomorrow's not promised to none of us, and that's not a scare tactic. That's the truth, y'all. Tomorrow not promised to none of us. It's time to get your house in order. Huh? Solomon said, and all you're getting, you better get you some understanding. Tomorrow's not promised to none of us. You can pray and ask Jesus to be the Lord of your life. Jesus, I'm a sinner. But I believe you died for my sins and you rose in three days. Please come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. Amen. That's that. It's that simple. You don't have to hold nobody's hand. You don't have to give no offering. It's truly that simple. And he will save you and be your Lord. Yes, he will. Amen. Let's pray. Righteous Father, I thank you for your word. Help us, God, to love you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And to love our neighbors as ourselves. And now, Father, we understand who our neighbor is. Help us to be wise in helping our neighbors. But you told us that sometimes we entertain angels and we don't even know it, God. So please help us to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Teach us your word. Let it fall on good ground. Let your word take root in our heart and bring forth fruit that remains for your glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. That's it for today. Have a wonderful, blessed week. Stay COVID free. And listen, what did Jesus say? Love your neighbor as yourself. Go and do the same. Be blessed.